Hello, everybody. This is John Ross uh, with the John Ross Show. We're uh, taping this on uh, Monday, Thursday, but we're going to release it on Good Friday. And I have with me today uh, a good friend who I've known many years, uh, Reverend Hashem Shahab. And uh, this is the John Ross Show. So we're going to, he's, uh, Reverend Hashem is at uh, Salam uh, Christian Fellowship, and uh, he's going to be ministering to us today. So I'm going to first put up a welcome to him. We got to welcome him. Now, where's my welcome? There's my welcome. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, yes. It's a and honor to be with you on your show. Yes, it's a blessing to have you. Uh, he's a busy man. He was doing busy things today already. So He's very busy, and he's going to be busy sharing uh, the gospel uh, tomorrow, uh, which is a Good Friday when we'll be airing this. He's uh, one of the station, one of the uh, seven last words of Christ. I, he told me just a moment ago he's going to do the last word. Uh, so we we just welcome him, and he's going to fill us in a little more about Salam Christian Fellowship. And uh, I'm just going to turn it over to him, and uh, he's going to give us some comments here. And I'm going to put myself down, and we'll come back at the end. But uh, he's going to give us some comments. So welcome, Reverend Hashem. Give us your thoughts, and it's just a blessing to have you today with me. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Thank you very much. You know... Uh... Many people uh, celebrate uh, Christmas in a big way, but uh, Good Friday is called Good Friday because uh, on the cross, Jesus accomplished salvation for us, you know, and uh, uh, this is why he said uh, in the Gospel of John uh, 19, verse 30, it is finished, you know. Uh, some so-called world religions are very erratic and are unsure when it is something to do with salvation, you know. Uh, for example, Hindus, uh, for Hindus, history is cyclical, you know. It goes in circles. So Hindus believe in karma. If you were a good person, you would be incarnated into a high form of life, you know, after your death. Or maybe a nice animal like a deer. I was teaching on this in a church and Somebody told me, oh, no, no, not a deer, because if you you are reincarnated in Minnesota or Wisconsin, they'll hunt you down every season and kill you, you know. So, so uh, 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 the other, on the other hand, Islamic history is linear, like, uh, you know, uh, Christian history, if I can say. But according to Islamic traditions called Hadith, even Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, didn't know what would happen to him uh, on doomsday because he said by Allah though I am the apostle of Allah yet I don't know what Allah will do to me you know he meant on doomsday no one is sure of salvation another you know in the same sense in the same sense his successor Caliph Abu Bakr his father-in-law and his closest friend said if one of my feet were inside paradise and the other outside it, I would not feel safe from the deception of Allah. So uh, only, only the followers of Jesus Christ really know that it is finished. It is finished and only because Jesus says so, you know. You know, there are moments of time, moments of time that really change our history, our life and uh, change the course of our life. Uh, one of those moments personally for me was when my uh, uh, cousin, I was 16 years old, my cousin was driving and uh, we were uh, driving towards uh, to a mountain resort and uh, I was 16, that was Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, and uh, my cousin tried to overtake uh, a car on a two-way, uh, uh, you know, road, and uh, blind uh, on a blind curve, if I can say, and uh, uh, we had a head-on collision, and uh, the car coming down the hill 
hit both cars, my cousin's car and the car we, he was trying to overtake. And uh, both of my legs were broken in that uh, crash. It changed the course of my life. I was two weeks away from giving my first Friday uh, sermon at uh, a mosque. I was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, they saw in me at an early age the, the kind of uh, the future uh, preacher I would be in Islam, I mean. So uh, it kind of uh, changed the course of my life instead of preaching on Friday, after two weeks, I was hospitalized for 50 days. And then uh, I was bedridden for a year. Instead of uh, becoming a preacher, I decided uh, it was, uh, I was hospitalized at the American University of Beirut Hospital. So American University of Beirut Hospital, the language of instruction is English. So. I was excited about the medical doctors and the nurses who were, you know, uh, actually excited about medicine, how the doctors and nurses were uh, fixing my broken bones and wounds. And uh, I thought maybe a medical doctor is better than a preacher. So uh, I decided to teach myself English. And long story short, I made it to the American University of Beirut to for uh, the, uh, I was admitted for the pre-medical program uh, after I passed a few tests and uh, I tried to focus on my medical studies, but again, God had a different uh, plan for my life. Another moment of uh, that changed the course of my life. My only brother, my only sibling was killed by a Christian militia. We were going through a civil war in Lebanon and... Uh, and Christians and Muslims were fighting over political power. I was devastated. I want to kill my enemies. And, uh, but uh, I was full of hate. I got a silence and a gun. But one day I signed up for a college course when, uh, uh, for uh, called cultural studies. And it had uh, selections from different uh, world literature and religions. And one morning after uh, coming from uh, uh, you know, hunting down, uh, trying to ambush my enemies with, with a gun. I came after a night of uh, stalking my enemies to hear something that changed my whole life again. I heard uh, this, the professor quoting from the Sermon on the Mount. I heard, love your, you'll love your enemies for the first time. I thought, oh, wow, this is ridiculous. Who could love his enemies? So Long story short, it took me seven years studying Islam and Christianity together, comparing them. And I decided I'm, I'm out of Islam and I decided to follow Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, uh, I became adjunct professor at the American University of Beirut and a journalist. I couldn't really focus on medicine. My, the death of my brother derailed me. And, uh, and uh, long story short, in 2004, I immigrate to the United States for good. I used to come lecture in colleges about Islam and uh, other, uh, you know, issues uh, and go back to Lebanon. But in 2004, God opened a door for me to come to seminary. Uh, I went to Concordia Seminary for Twain, Indiana. And uh, after uh, three years, I two years actually, I moved to uh, to uh, Illinois, and in Illinois, I uh, I was uh, I set up a ministry to help uh, Muslim refugees know about Jesus Christ. And one day, I was going uh, uh, to Wheaton and Glen Allen to distribute uh, a food basket on Easter. Easter is always kind of something that uh, really uh, I mean very dear to my heart because that uh, you know easter season i met a palestinian muslim woman who uh, was uh, very socially active and I, uh, I, get, I she wanted more food baskets so i gave her more and uh, she invited me with my wife to have tea in her apartment and i saw how people were coming the neighbors having tea and coffee and uh, spending time with her so i asked her would you like uh, can i 
uh, you know, uh, start a Bible study class in your apartment? She said, yes, you know, a Muslim woman, a Muslim woman in that apartment, you know, uh, she said, yes, you teach and I'll make lunch for them, you know. So we founded Salam Christian Fellowship uh, that uh, season, uh, Easter 2007. That season, we baptized seven people from Iran, from Iraq, from Palestine. And uh, then we moved to a church in on Butterfield Road, the Peace Lutheran Church. We, we borrow space until today. So, uh, so moments in time are very important, you know. And when Jesus said, it is finished, it was a very important in time. Many people said it is finished, you know. Pontius Pilate pushed himself away from the judgment seat and sighed when Jesus said it is finished. Oh, another political troublemaker out of the way. The Jewish religious leaders looked at one another in relief and, and, and agreed when Jesus said it is finished. We'll have no more trouble from him. The soldiers who uh, tortured him all day and... Uh, when he said it is finished, exclaimed, wow, it is finished. Now we got rid of, of him. Uh, we got rid of that uh, nasty task of torturing him and uh, breaking. They didn't break his legs. We'll come to that soon. So the crowds also who shouted, crucify him, crucify him. The, the crowds who welcomed him and celebrated, Hosanna, Hosanna, that day shouted, crucify him. And when he slumped down and said it is finished, they felt, oh, he is finished. We, we got rid of our guilt and shame because we turned over a, an innocent man to the Romans. All these comments were about the moment, the day, the death. But it's not so with Jesus' final words. Jesus said it is finished. When Jesus said it is finished, it were, they were words that had cosmic consequences. His words are not about the day, the death, the moment. His words are timeless. His words are timeless and of such significance that they changed everything. It is finished. Jesus' last words are just one short phrase in the Bible narrative, but but consider, it is finished is Jesus' final declaration of victory. His last word that began before the beginning. For we are reminded in John's gospel that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. He was God. So Jesus' words of the word incarnate. These words of the logos which eyewitnesses heard spoken from the cross, these words before all that is. They were there before before all that is. They were there before the first light, before the first spark of life, before we were knit together in our mother's womb. Indeed, before creation itself, this final punctuation in a sentence spoken in love, spoken across and time across space and time spoken through the ages by the prophets and the patriarchs. And in these last days, spoken by God's Son, Jesus, the final punctuation in his sentence spoken, lived and breathed into words such as, and I, when I, and I, when I am lifted up, will draw all people to myself. The words love one another as I loved you, uttered by the word. The Logos, the word incarnate, these words call us to action, to deeds of love, to healing, to reconciliation, to embrace those around us. These words speak of love when the hands himself, when he hands himself over, gives himself up, pours himself out until there is nothing left for us. There is nothing more left, nothing more to give. Just one last breath, one last short phrase. These words, these words by the Logos were spoken in gasp in an agonizing whisper in pain. Yes, but with great power, 
This is the loudest declaration of victory. It is finished, period. In the famous hymn, Rock of Ages, cleft for me we sing. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill thy law's demand. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All could never sin erase. Thou must save and save by grace. You know, every uh, Easter, every Good Friday, I meditate on the three thieves on the cross. Uh, I mean, the two thieves on the cross with Jesus in the middle. And, uh, you know, the Romans uh, wanted to end this up quickly because the Passover holiday is coming and they had to to finish the those who the, whom they crucified they want to finish them off and usually when somebody is crucified they push themselves by the feet to breathe to in order to uh finish them off they had to break their legs so one of the thieves as we know uh as Jesus, you know, uh, you know uh, he wanted to be with Jesus in paradise, you know, and Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. He believed on the cross. He embraced Jesus in cross, in the, on the cross while the other thief was reprimanding Jesus and uh, hurling insults at him, okay? And the other thieves that mention me in your kingdom, you know, for uh, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus said, to, today you will be with me in paradise. So as soon, as soon as the Roman soldiers broke his legs, he was with Jesus in paradise because he died instantly. We know that the Romans did not break Jesus' legs because to uh, to fulfill the prophecy by no leg of his, uh, no bone of his, of his will be broken, the Messiah. So as soon as the legs of the thief who believed in Jesus were broken, he was with Jesus in paradise. I meditate on that moment when my legs were broken in that car crash that God had a plan for me to be with Jesus, not to be a Muslim preacher, not to be a terrorist, but a follower of Christ, a disciple of Jesus who makes disciples. Oh, Jesus, word made flesh, you lifted up your arms and stretched out your hands in love until all was completed to you in your finished work on the cross. We bring this day all that we have left unfinished we bring to you on this day though that all that we have left unfinished we bring those times when we didn't love you as you loved or lived as you have called us to live all the times we have fallen short we bring to you all our unwilling willingness to serve to give and to forgive we bring to you our faithlessness and our unfulfilled potential. We bring it all to you because it is finished, period. May, may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and mind this day in Christ Jesus. Amen. Back to you, John. Yeah, we're back, and uh, thank you for sharing this this message of of hope and uh, your some of your story there. I know it's 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 a very complex story, but Jesus found you, and I really am thankful that I met you many years ago, and about your ministry in the Chicagoland area that you do so beautifully and uh, we just thank you for that and um, so i just want to thank you you got any more comments or is that uh, 
wrap you up pretty much there for right now. If you have any questions, I would, uh, you know, kind of uh, answer them. But uh, an update on uh, on Salam, uh, we have we are supporting a missionary uh, to the Muslims in California as well. We were able also to send two people to seminary. Uh, we also worked on a, the translation of a testimony of a. Uh, uh, Iraqi brother to Farsi because uh, we have a group of people who come to Salam uh, called Mandaean. They claim that they follow John the Baptist. So uh, we uh, we work on a translation of the testimony of a friend who uh, came to faith in Jesus Christ and wrote, wrote his life story. He was a, uh, a high officer uh, in the Iraqi Navy, and now he lives in Australia. And uh, so most Mandaean speak Farsi, the language of Iran, because most of them live, live in, in the southern uh, uh, part of Iran. So we kind of uh, uh, planning to publish this as a book. And we uh, just, you know, uh, uh, things sometimes you, uh, I mean, I have to mention how much it cost. Uh, we uh, reached out to a uh, Farsi publishing uh, firm in California where many Iranians live. They said it costs $5,000 to publish that book. So we count on God's people to provide uh, for us. Mm -hmm. This is a faith ministry where I'm not supported by the Lutheran church where I am ordained. I am, I'm supported by many churches. You know, some of them are not Lutheran. Uh, you know, and uh, God has really uh, opened doors in many ways uh, to, uh, to support this God's mission. Uh, we are now also working on audiovisuals. We produce uh, uh, apologetic uh, videos on uh, on theological issues difficult to Muslims in Arabic. Uh, now also we are producing uh, uh, a series on. Uh, the Christian Catechism in Arabic uh, as a videos, YouTubes. We finished almost two episodes and we have uh, more than eight to go. So the cost will be around $4,000 for that. So we, again, we count on God's people, you know, to provide for uh, this project. And uh, since I came here to... Uh, to Illinois, I never liked anything. God is good, and uh, he is uh, really promoting his mission like the mustard seed, you know. Somebody, a Muslim this morning, asked me what, uh, he's reading the Bible under my kind of supervision. What does the mustard seed stand for? What does it stand for? I told him, you know, faith, uh, you know, grows in the hearts of people, even when we, where we don't expect it, you know. As Salam was founded in a Muslim apartment, you know, in a Muslim home, a Christian fellowship where we, we baptized more than 50 people from Middle East, God can really reach people in many ways. Maybe through a billboard, maybe uh, through a read, radio station, maybe through a college course like what happened to me, you know. God is good and uh, we count, you know, in God to promote this, must, uh, to water the mustard seed, yeah. Yes, and uh, I'm sorry I don't have the website up, but what would be a good way to get you on the internet? Uh, I forgot, is it salamchristianfellowship.org or is something yes. else? salamchristianfellowship.org and the other, I have two ministers, messiahformuslims.org, uh, messiahformuslims.org, so you can, uh, uh, if you want to donate online, messiahformuslims.org is more doable. The other, you have to send a check to, to the address. Uh, right. The website. Okay. Now, you said it was Muslims? How was that? Oh, excuse me. Messiah for Muslims. Uh, you can say it either ways because it will direct you to messiahformuslims.org. Oh, Messiah Muslim for Muslims. Muslims. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you, you said something very important. You said, Jesus found you. Yeah, Jesus found me. I uh, kind of, the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, revives our hearts. We are dead in our sins, and the Holy Spirit revives our hearts, and we decide to follow Jesus Christ, you know. So Jesus found me, you know, 
and uh, and this is why we called it Messiah for Muslims. Actually, it started as Muslims for the Messiah. Then a friend of mine pointed out this fact, you know, that Jesus seeks us and finds us. We should turn it to, into Messiah for Muslims. And we did. <laughs> Messiah so, yeah. for Muslims. See, I, got to, I know you had it both ways, so I get that. So. Yeah, yeah, both ways will would work. For, for yeah, I website. know. But you anyway, know I, I really appreciate that I that the Lord found you and that I found you too many years mm -hmm. ago. And uh, we've been... Uh, together and many uh i hope i hope we can do more of these type of things and just your ministry and uh uh and what you're doing it's just so appreciated sham and uh i'm just going to put up a little thank you for sham here we just got to thank that brother for being with us and if you have uh, any questions john you know feel feel free okay well i uh well, I okay. I'll I'll throw out one question here. It's sort of uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's your political, but it's a world situation about the Middle East right now, and yeah. and e and Christmas. I mean, Christmas and Easter in the Middle East, and your home in Lebanon. How how is that uh, affecting uh, our Christian brothers in the Middle East? This war. Well, uh, you know, the Christian in Gaza celebrated, uh, you know, Palm Sunday, and uh, they are very, very, a very, very small minority. And uh, uh, from the reports, I follow that uh, only 35% of Gaza is destroyed, and there are a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, exaggeration in uh, in the media about the uh, magnitude of destruction and. Uh, the victims, uh, which we really, uh, our hearts really, uh, really kind of bleed for them. Uh, concerning uh, South Lebanon, uh, we, I actually, I want to add that I have a friend who reaches Muslims in Gaza and the West Bank. His name is Tess Abisada. He is Palestinian. And uh, he uh, met uh, or I met a, a pastor in a restaurant uh, some like four, more than 40 years ago, and uh, uh, he uh, felt God's love in this man uh, who kind of later, uh, you know, sponsored him. And uh, he's now uh, doing two ministries, really, one called Hope for Ishmael and another one in Gaza and the West Bank. Uh, he uh, he uh, flies from he lives in Missouri and flies to to uh, per, I mean uh, back and forth between uh, the Palestinian territories and uh, he had a an office for evangelism in Gaza and uh, radical Muslims destroyed it burned it down uh, so uh, so that was uh, some years ago. Right. So, but uh, look up Tess Abisada if you like, or reach out to me, and I'll direct you to his, uh, you know, ministry. Uh, another thing in South Lebanon, uh, you know, South Lebanon is north of uh, Israel, and uh, Hezbollah is shooting rockets from South Lebanon. And uh, I want to let you uh, know that uh, many villages in South Lebanon are Christian. You know. <laughs> Uh, not Shiite Muslims, and uh, uh, they had to evacuate those villages and uh, our brothers and sisters in those Christian villages have no compensation like the Israelis in North uh, Israel. Like uh, North Israel, like more than 200,000 Israelis were evacuated and live in, uh, in uh, hotels and what have you, but uh, our Christian brothers and sisters were uh, forcibly evacuated from their homes in those uh, villages in Lebanon along the border are living in tents and schools and what have you, you know, or uh, staying with relatives with no compensation or support from the Lebanese government. So uh, it seems Christians suffer on both sides, you know. So, right. uh, yeah. Well, Reverend Hisham, you want to close out our, our Good Friday message here with a, with a prayer for our... Heavenly Father, uh, we know that the Prince of Peace has accomplished salvation for us on the cross, and uh, 
with his resurrection we have eternal life uh, and uh, we ask you in the name of the prince of peace to bring peace to the middle east uh, especially to the hearts of the of the people who want to kill each other and uh, exterminate each other whether it's palestinians or israeli we ask you to bless uh, john's ministry and uh, use him for your glory in jesus precious name we pray amen amen and uh i'm going to show two more things here really fast here we're just going to wrap it up here i'm going to remind everybody if if they're free on easter morning uh there's a sunrise service there's a sunrise service in aurora at uh at mccarty park and uh that's at uh 6 30 in the morning mccarty park's on the east side of aurora at, at about 400 east galena boulevard so and the other thing is if you're uh, into pancakes i got pancakes for you on uh on april 6th uh, you can look at roaraquanis.org for more information about the pancake breakfast that i'm involved with so i just want to thank again reverend asham for being with me today and uh we just uh, love him and let uh, me see what happened here. I got to get myself back up here. Something's happening here. I don't like the way this looks, but we can't. There we are a little bit. <laughs> well, that's technology. I'm just learning all the time, Reverend Hashem. Anyway, so thank you so much for being with us. And uh, so as we said before, uh, again, again, thank you, Reverend Asham, and God bless, and we'll see you soon again. Bye bye, bye bye. Right. Now, God bless everybody. Right. Bye right. bye. It's turned off.